Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, in case you didn't know, and today I'm gonna be recording a vlog for you. I'm gonna go pick up some camera gear. I'm gonna get some lights so I can actually film a little bit better in my space, because as you can tell, it's quite dark. Yes, especially when it's raining outside. And then um, I'll probably grab some food and hopefully go to an antique slash vintage shop. So stay tuned. Oh, and uh, this is what I'm wearing in case you were wondering. I've kind of got that adventure safari style going on today, which I really love. And it's nice and cozy for the weather today. It's supposed to rain. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'll throw on a cardigan. See how it goes. I've just stopped to drop off um, some mail at the mailbox and uh, Brendan left the car empty. It's okay, I'll fill it up. Can I make it to the gas station? We'll find out. Have I showed you guys my wallet from Barra Barra? Oh my God, please don't look at my nails. Um, but it has my name on it. I just think it's so pretty. Not sponsored or anything. They did gift it to me, but I just, I think it's so cute. I decided to sit outside um, because I'm still not super comfortable with the whole COVID eating inside thing because cases are going back up even though I'm double vaccinated. You probably can't hear me at all, but cheers. So I got the mushroom bowl. Also look how cute their forks are. I got the mushroom bowl and it's got sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, um, it looks like enoki mushrooms, beets, roasted carrots, brown rice, and kale. It looks so good. Oh gosh, it's really raining now. Uh, I don't mind though, uh, for now, we'll see. Um, but yeah, oh, well, there's peas in it too. Woo! Mm. Uh huh. That's freaking good. There is a blessing waiting for their owner. Hi. Hi. Well, no, not interested. Too busy. <laughs> Okay, so that lunch was phenomenal. Um, I'm really, really happy. I'm full. I maybe ate a little bit too much, but it was just so good. Oh my God, it was delicious. I am definitely gonna go back there. That was my first time going. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the camera store and uh, do a pickup of the lights that I ordered. I've driven like a whole one minute to get here. I would have just walked, but I wasn't sure how big the boxes would be, and I really don't know if I'm in the right place because it looks very industrial. Um, I guess I'm gonna get out of the car and try and find my way. Never mind, I literally parked right across the street and I just didn't see it. We got the camera gear. I am so excited. I'm gonna go now to 
an antique store hopefully um, I've never been there but that's where my parents got my typewriter for my birthday a few years back and they said it was really amazing and that I would love it so I don't know why it's taken me so dang long to go but it's about time let's hope that's enough so I just spent 15 minutes looking for the place only to find it uh, closed to film sets only until Monday so I'm gonna go to a bookstore hopefully because I've already paid for expensive parking so I might as well do something around this area but I guess we'll see hopefully that'll be nice instead and hopefully that's open <laughs> Yes, the bookstore is open. Perfect. I already have this book at home. I got it for my birthday. Um, I haven't read it yet. I really would like to though, so I should do that soon. Um, but I'm finding some really, really good stuff here. I forgot how much I love that bookshop. I haven't been in a couple years, I think, a few years. Um, and I'm just very pleased. I probably bought a few too many books, um, considering I have been finding everything's loud. Considering I have been finding quite a few in little free libraries lately, um, I still need to read through a lot of them. I just couldn't help myself um, and it's a really great independent bookstore they give you 10% off if you spend over $30 so naturally I have to spend over $30 I'll do a little book haul when I get home I did see on the way some chicken of the woods and that is a mushroom that grows on I was gonna say deciduous trees but grows on both coniferous and deciduous trees and it is like this orange sort of fanned mass and the reason it's called chicken of the woods is it really does taste like chicken at least the texture like we what did we do last year we battered it and deep fried it and it was like you were having chicken strips so crazy so i'm gonna go harvest some of that i think if it's looking good i'm also gonna stop by one other place that i think might have some growing hopefully i'll be able to get enough that we can have a little meal we'll see i'll keep you updated of course so the whole time i'm inside there's no rain None. And then I'm, I want to go get these fungi off some trees outside and this is what it looks like. Okay, it was just a random extreme burst of rain, so I'm on the street that I thought might have chicken of the woods, and it does, but I think, one, I can't reach that. I've driven past a few that have been dead and it looks like this one is too. So I'm gonna go to the one that I did see earlier today that looked in pretty good condition and hopefully harvest it, we'll see. Just a quick note before I go in to harvest the chicken of the woods and show you what it looks like. Just cause I'm showing you what this looks like on camera doesn't mean it's gonna be the same in your neighborhood. You might see something orange on a tree and think, oh heck yeah that's that chicken of the woods thing Anna was talking about and it may not be um there are look-alikes that can be poisonous and that type of thing i think chicken of the woods is a pretty simple one to learn but please do learn how to identify mushrooms and various things before foraging them and eating them because your life is worth a lot more than the taste of a mushroom. Without further ado, let me show you this bad boy. I have a produce bag and a little pocket knife that Brendan got me for my birthday that is for foraging mushrooms. I mean, the knife itself isn't specifically made for that, but he bought it with the intention 
of me foraging. So I'm very excited to use it. It's like the first time I've used it on not a package or something like that. So I would love to actually harvest something with it. Let's go. I got my chicken of the woods here. Yes, I had a mushroom knife and a produce bag in my backpack. But that is because I know that it's chicken of the woods season and I, I just don't wanna drive past one and then be like, dang it, I really wanted that. I've got it, I'm ready. Uh, I'm gonna surprise Brendan with it. Looks pretty good to me. This part I'm gonna need to cut off, but all these bits in the top, so good, perfect. This one's looking even better. Mm. Oh my gosh, my nails match it. Well, what's left of my nails. <laughs> Anyhow, we're not gonna eat the chicken of the woods probably tonight uh, because it's like takeout Friday. We call it Uber Eats Friday because we get Uber Eats, but we'll have it tomorrow night. So I'm very excited for that. And in the meantime, we've got some lights to play with. Are you guys ready? <laughs> oh my god, I can't see anything. Okay, so we have the light on. Uh, the diffuser is on there as well this time. And I think it's pretty good. It's very, very bright. Like this is on a really low brightness, but I am very excited to learn how to use it. I don't know if we've set it up at the right angle and everything quite yet, but I am excited to be able to film more both here on YouTube and on Instagram, like reels and things like that. So without further ado, let's get on to my book haul. Here are my purchases. I bought four books. The first book I purchased is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I'm so excited for this one. I've only ever read one book by him and that was Coraline. I read that last year and I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked his writing style. So I'm looking forward to diving into more of his world. I'm going to be reading spooky Halloween autumn books starting real soon, basically when I'm done the book I'm reading right now. And this one even says on the back by one of the reviews, like a bite of dark Halloween chocolate, this novel proves rich, bittersweet, and very satisfying. And that kind of won my heart. So I was debating between a couple books and I was, saw that review and I was like, all right, I couldn't find the synopsis, but there is like a little teaser um, before the book actually starts. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and read that to you. They found it behind a coffin on the bottom shelf. A simple crawl space. Down there, said Bod. Or Bode, I don't know. We go down there. Scarlet found herself suddenly enjoying the adventure rather less. She said, we can't see down there. It's dark. I don't need a light, said Bod. Not while I'm in the graveyard. I do, said Scarlet. It's dark. Bod thought about the reassuring things he could say, like, there's nothing bad down there. But the tales of hair turning white and people never returning meant that he could not have said them with a clear conscience. Conscience. So he said, I'll go down. You wait for me up here, Scarlet frowned. You shouldn't leave me, she said. I'll go down, said Bod, Bod. and I'll see who's there. I'll come back and tell you all about it. So that sounds like a good adventure, spooky book. I'm very, very excited. The second book I got is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I also read a book from her last year. I read We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which was so good. I really enjoyed that. Looking forward to this, I really enjoyed the Netflix series, but I'm sure that the book is filled with more details. It's gonna scare me in a different way. And it's just such a cool copy, like, I love this and look at the, the pages are black on the outside. Ooh. Yes, so that one was 30% off. So I was happy to get that. On the back it says, no live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. 
here is the synopsis. Four seekers have arrived at the rambling old pile known as Hill House. Dr. Montague, an occult scholar looking for solid evidence of psychic phenomena. Theodora, his lovely and light-hearted assistant. Luke, the adventurous future inheritor of the estate. And Eleanor, a friendless, fragile young woman with a dark past. As they begin to cope with the chilling, even horrifying occurrences beyond their control or understanding, they cannot possibly know what lies ahead. For Hill House is gathering its powers, and soon it will choose one of them to make its own. Thrilled! Next is a book that I know is one of my friend Imogen's favourites, and that is The Witches of New York by Amy McKay. Apparently it's a, a really interesting book. She seems to be a great author. This one was also a used book, so it had a very good deal on it. Let's read the synopsis. The year is 1880. 200 years after the trials in Salem, Adelaide Tom, moth from the Virgin Cure, has left her life in the sideshow to open up a tea shop with another young woman who feels it's finally safe enough to describe herself as a witch. A former medical student and gardien de soeur, keeper of spells, Eleanor St. Clair. Together, they cater to Manhattan's high society ladies, specializing in cures, palmistry, and potions and in guarding the secrets of their clients. All is well until one bright September when an enchanting young woman named Beatrice Dunn arrives at their door seeking employment. Beatrice soon becomes indispensable as Eleanor's apprentice, but she's also a magnet for unusual occurrences. She sees things no one else can see. She hears voices no one else can hear. Objects appear to her out of thin air, as if gifts from the dead. Has she been touched by magic, or is she simply losing her mind? Eleanor wants to tread lightly and respect the magic manifest in the girl, but Adelaide sees a business opportunity. In the middle of the witch's tug of war over her, Beatrice disappears. Just kidding on PR. <laughs> also, the bookstore gave me a bunch of these cute little bookmarks with owls on them, which is like their logo. One can never have enough bookmarks. I'm constantly losing them. I don't know where they go. Maybe I leave them in books. I don't know. And look how pretty it is without the dust cover on it. So it's got this raven here or crow holding a key on a string and it's sitting on like a nest of flowers and ferns. And then here's the, the side of it. It's gorgeous. So pretty. I really like it. And the last book is a book that I hadn't heard of before I went, which I typically wouldn't buy um, just because that just helps me narrow down books. And if it's already on my to be read list, that's a good thing because then I know that I've wanted to read it for a while. But this one I saw it and I was like, okay, I gotta buy it. It's really good sounding. It's horror stories, um, but it's Tark to me. I'm trying my best to pronounce this correctly. I know that the Q has to be a little bit more guttural. I wasn't able to find a pronunciation online, so bear with me. Tak to me, hopefully. And it is an anthology of Arctic horror stories. The cover is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see, but it's beautiful. Crow or raven. It's a little hard to tell because the beak's cut off and that's how I usually can distinguish between them. And it's got some waves as well and it's all in black. Tak to me is an inuktitut word that means in the dark. And these spine-tingling horror stories by northern writers show just how dangerous darkness can be. A family clinging to survival out on the tundra after a vicious zombie virus. A door that beckons, waiting to unleash the terror behind it. A post-apocalyptic community in the far north where things aren't quite what they seem. This collection will thrill and entertain even the most seasoned horror fan. So that sounds really great. I'm really excited to learn a little bit of like mythology, um, but also some folklore, um, and these stories. I, I can't wait. I'm so happy with the book choices I got. In case you couldn't tell, they're all spooky slash Halloween autumnal books. So I'm really looking forward to reading more of those in the coming months. And now I have some reading material to go through. All right, so I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. I'm just gonna go shower and then we're gonna order some food and probably play some minecraft so it's gonna be a chill night in and it's gonna be probably a little dark in here because it's gloomy outside so i won't be able to film much thank you all so much for watching and i really appreciate you coming along with me um on my day today and i love you so much